Salutations, people of the internet, Matt here from Hydro Gaming, and welcome to episode 17 of Nightwatch Journey, a series where we as a community create our very own single player RPG video game using the power of the Unreal Engine. In today's episode, we'll be covering things like a day night cycle, new skyboxes, an advanced weather system, and improved outdoor lighting. So the first thing I'd like to go over today is the newly implemented day-night cycle in Nightwatch. Now, if you've got a keen eye for details, you may have noticed the time change in the background of the last video, showcasing the new Nightwatch theme song being developed by Nos Beats, who is also working on other original soundtracks for the game as well, such as combat music, ambient music, yada yada yada. More on that in a future video. So I gotta say, for this one, I ended up going to the dark side just a little bit. Because I didn't want to start the system from scratch, I did get a very basic and foundational asset from the Unreal Engine 4 Asset Store to begin building off of for this project. As I said when I started this series, I want to be completely transparent any and every time I use an asset that I didn't make myself. Even if I'm using it as a jumping off point from which to build my own system, regardless of whether or not the end product is completely different from what was in the store, I don't want to hide anything. And in case you didn't know, I have a link on my main channel page to a document listing any and all store-bought assets I've used in the game thus far. Most of it is environmental assets and 3D models, as I'm not super great with Blender. As for code, most of that I've made on my own. Anything that I didn't make on my own will be listed in the document. There's not that much. Anyways, I love the Good Sky system because 1. It's absolutely free to use, and 2. It's simple to use but doesn't have an insane amount of features, so I still had to do a lot of tweaking to get to work with our project, and its pre-existing configurations. Mainly, the post-processing effects for things like lens flare, shadows, reflection, lighting, blah blah blah. So the way the day-night cycle will work in Nightwatch is similar to the way it works in games like Skyrim or Fallout. In-game, time will pass at a rate faster than real-time. I'm thinking each in-game minute will be equal to one real-life second. As the day progresses, you'll go through stages like sunrise, midday, evening, sunset, and so on. As I continue to work on the game, I'd like these times to be reflected in the daily lives of NPCs and all things in the game world. For example, during the day, shops will be open for the player to peruse, but during the night, NPCs will return to their homes to sleep. In addition to a day-night cycle, we now have the ability to change features of the skybox. This includes cloud type, density, speed, sky darkness, stars, moon and sun opacity, and more. Now this system is great because it is value-based. What this means is that every feature is controlled by a number that I can scale up or down. Values like these are so easy to save in Unreal Engine, which means I can save presets. So let's say that later on in the game the player discovers a spell that can change the weather. Maybe this one makes it a storm. Well, I can customize the storm to look the way I want it to in game, and then save all these values as a preset, which I would name something like Storm Spell. So then when the player casts a spell, I'd simply have the game load this preset and the weather would change to match. Easy peasy. Speaking of the weather, let's jump into the next section. As I said before, this system allows us to change things like weather effects. With all of the other systems we have in place, we can do a few things. We can create storms with thunder and lightning. We can add rain and snow to our game. We can also add things like falling leaves and change the direction of the wind in the game. This is done by creating box areas where these specific effects are applied. This means that in areas that would generally be colder or snowier, such as mountaintops, we'll now have the weather to match. In warmer areas at a lower altitude, such as Edenvale, which sits at sea level, you won't see as much snow, but with all the trees in the surrounding area, especially with ongoing forestry operations at the Eden Company Mill, you can expect to see blowing leaves throughout the town. Before we move on, we have a very special message from today's sponsor, us. If you're visiting the channel for the first time and enjoying what you see, just know that we have a wide variety of content on the channel. Besides making our own video game in our flagship series, where I work with the community to craft a single player RPG using the Unreal Engine, we're currently doing Minecraft challenges, one-off videos where we play less than popular games on Steam, as well as playthroughs of video games. Right now we're playing Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion. We also have a merch store with a link in the description down below. And if you enjoy what you've seen on the channel, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and ringing the bell down below for notifications. It's totally free and it really helps out the channel. And down the road, if you decide, you can always unsubscribe later. And now, back to the video.
To end off today's episode, we'll be going over some improvements I've made to the lighting system. So, when I was a kid, I used to play a lot of Sonic games. Not the good ones, but the crappy 3D New Age ones. And for some reason, every cutscene had to show off the lens flare from the sun. And I loved it. So, naturally, I want to do the same thing in Nightwatch. Enter post-processing volumes. A post-processing volume is basically a giant collision box that adds or modifies visual effects in your scene. This could include things like visual blur, depth of field, bokeh effects, contrast, saturation, lens flares, etc, etc. Basically any sort of thing you would hear a professional photographer talk about adjusting on their camera. So to keep things simple, I dragged a big box into my scene, played with some numbers while following a multitude of lighting tutorials, and after a little while, my son is pretty. Alright folks, that's all I have for you today. I know last episode I said I would cover changes that I'm making to the water system, but I just started working on swimming mechanics and I thought it would make more sense to put these two things in the same video. In future videos, I'd also like to start working on the UI as well as finishing up the armor and inventory system, so our character can wear more than just one set of armor, and their body mesh won't poke through the armor, so you can see things like their thighs or their chest poking through the armor set. Anyways, I look forward to getting those episodes out to you, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.